Hi! Ready for some learning? Okay, so in this test you have 50 questions and you need to answer 43 out of 50, correct? Each question has only one answer. So let's get started. You are turning right onto a dual carriageway. What should you do before emerging? A. Check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle. B. Make sure that you leave enough room for a vehicle behind. C. Position your vehicle well to the left of the side road. D. Stop, apply the parking brake and then select a low gear. And the countdown starts now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ready? And the correct answer is A. Check that the central reservation is wide enough for your vehicle. Explanation. Before emerging right onto a dual carriageway, make sure that the central reservation is deep enough to protect your vehicle. If it isn't, you should treat the dual carriageway as one road and check that it's clear in both directions before pulling out. Neglecting to do so could place part or all of your vehicle in the path of approaching traffic and could cause a collision. And the next question is, you are looking for somewhere to park your vehicle. What should you do if the only free spaces are marked for disabled drivers? A. Park in one of these spaces but stay with your vehicle. B. Use one of the spaces as long as one is kept free. C. Use one of these spaces. D. Wait for a regular parking space to become free. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, one and the correct answer is the wait for a regular parking space to become free explanation it's illegal to park in a space reserved for disabled drivers unless you are permitted to do so these spaces are provided for people with limited mobility who may need the extra space to get in and out of their vehicle. Next question. How will you benefit from following the manufacturer's service schedule for your vehicle? A. Your journey times will be reduced. B. Your vehicle tax will be lower. C. Your vehicle will be cheaper to insure. D. Your vehicle will remain reliable. Let's go with the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Your vehicle will remain reliable. Explanation. All vehicles need to be serviced to keep working efficiently. An efficient engine uses less fuel and produces fewer harmful emissions than an engine that's running inefficiently. Keeping the vehicle serviced to the manufacturer's schedule should also keep it reliable and reduce the chance of it breaking down. Are we ready for the next question? Which is... You are stopped at the side of the road. What must you do if you will be waiting there for some time? A. Apply the steering lock. B. Switch off the engine. C. Switch off the radio. Or D. Use your headlights. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is 
B. Switch off the engine. Explanation. If your vehicle is stationary and is likely to remain so for some time, you must switch off the engine unless you are stationary in traffic or diagnosing a fault. And I trust that you got the right answer. Please guys let me know in the comments below if you answered this right. And let's move on to the next question. Why do motorcyclists wear bright clothing? A. It helps keep them cool in the summer. B. The colors are popular. C. They must do so by law. D. To make them more visible. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. And the correct answer is D. To make them more visible. Explanation. Motorcycles and scooters are generally smaller than other vehicles and can be difficult to see. Wearing bright clothing makes it easier for other road users to see a motorcyclist approaching, especially at junctions. And the next question. What should you be aware of if you have just passed this sign? A. All traffic is going one way. B. Only one lane is in use. C. This is a single track road. D. You can't stop on this road. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. All traffic is going one way. Explanation. In a one-way system, traffic may pass you on either side. Always be aware of all traffic signs and understand their meaning. Look well ahead and react to them in good time. Let's get to the next question. How can you reduce the risk of your vehicle being broken into at night? A. Don't engage the steering lock. B. Leave it in a well-lit area. C. Park in a poorly lit area. D. Park in a quiet side road. And the countdown begins now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Leave it in a well-lit area. Why? Having your vehicle broken into or stolen can be very distressing and inconvenient. Avoid leaving your vehicle unattended in poorly lit areas. Next question. What should you do if you see a pedestrian waiting at a zebra crossing? A. Be ready to slow down or stop to let them cross. B. Go on quickly before they step onto the crossing. C. Ignore them as they are still on the pavement. D. Stop before you reach the zigzag lines and let them cross. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. And the correct answer is... A. Be ready to slow down or stop to let them cross. Explanation. By standing on the pavement, the pedestrian is showing an intention to cross. By looking well ahead, you will give yourself time to see the pedestrian, check your mirrors and respond safely. Next question. What does 25 mean on this motorway sign? A. The distance to the nearest town. B. The number of the next junction. C. The route number of the road. Or D. 
the speed limit on the slip road. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, the number of the next junction. Explanation. Before you set out on your journey, use a roadmap to plan your route. When you see an advance warning of your junction, make sure you get into the correct lane in plenty of time. Last minute harsh braking and cutting across lanes at speed is extremely hazardous. Next question everyone, are you ready? When should you update your vehicle registration certificate? A. When you have a collision. B. When you move house. C. When you pass your driving test. Or D. When your vehicle needs an MOT. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B, when you move house. Explanation. As the registered keeper of the vehicle, it's up to you to inform DVLA of any changes in your details. For example, your name change or address change. You do this by filling in and sending off the relevant section of the registration certificate. Next question, you are about to drive your car, okay? What should you do if you can't find the glasses that you need to wear? A. Borrow a friend's glasses and use those. B. Drive home at night so that the lights will help you. C. Drive home slowly, keeping to quiet roads. Or D. Find a way of getting home without driving. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm sure you know the answer to this. And the correct answer is D. Find a way of getting home without driving. Explanation. If you need to wear glasses for driving, it's illegal to drive without them. You must be able to see clearly when you are driving and not to mention it's also safe to wear your glasses when you are driving and your own glasses. Next question. What can people who live or work in towns and cities do to help reduce urban pollution levels a drive more quickly b drive short journeys c over rev in a low gear d walk or cycle five four three two one the correct answer is d walk or cycle explanation using a vehicle for short journeys means the engine doesn't have time to reach its normal operating temperature when an engine is running below its normal operating temperature it produces increased amounts of pollution walking and cycling don't create pollution and they also have health benefits next question where should you take particular care to look for motorcyclists and cyclists? A. At junctions B. At zebra crossings C. On dual carriageways D. On one-way streets And the countdown begins now 5 4 3 2 1 and the correct answer is A at junctions. Explanation. Motorcyclists and cyclists are often more difficult to see at junctions. They are easily hidden from view and you may not be able to see them 
approaching a junction if your view is partially blocked, for example, by other traffic. Next question. When are you allowed to use hazard warning lights? A. When parked on double yellow lines to visit a shop. B. When stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic. C. When traveling during darkness without headlights. D. When traveling slowly because you are lost. 5. 4. 3. 2, 1, and the correct answer is B, when stopped and temporarily obstructing traffic. Explanation. You mustn't use hazard warning lights while moving except to warn traffic behind when you slow suddenly on a motorway or unrestricted dual carriageway. Never use hazard warning lights to excuse dangerous or illegal parking. Next question. Why is it a good idea to plan your journey to avoid busy times? A. It will cause more traffic congestion. B. You will have a more stressful journey. C. You will have an easier journey. D. Your journey time will be longer. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. You will have an easier journey. Explanation. No one likes to spend time in traffic use. Try to avoid busy times related to school or work travel. Honestly, I hate traffic use. Like when you are at a standstill, it's crazy. Next question. What should you do when you see these horse riders in front? A. Give a right turn signal. B. Pull out to the middle of the road. C. Slow down and be ready to stop. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. And the countdown begins now. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is C. Slow down and be ready to stop. Explanation. Be particularly careful when approaching horse riders. Slow down and be prepared to stop. Always pass wide and slowly and look out for signals given by the riders. Horses are unpredictable and always treat them as potential hazards and take great care when passing them. Let's move on to the next question. You have to arrive on time for an appointment. How should you plan for the journey? A. Allow plenty of time for the trip. B. Avoid roads with the national speed limits. C. Plan to travel at busy times. D. Prevent other drivers from overtaking. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. Allow plenty of time for the trip. Explanation. Always allow plenty of time for your journey in case of unforeseen problems. Anything can happen. For example, punctures, breakdowns, road closures, diversions and delays. You will feel less stressed and less inclined to take risks if you aren't pushed for time. Next question. You are following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. Where would you expect the cyclist to go? A. Any direction. B. Left. C. Right. D. Straight ahead. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is 
a any direction. Explanation. Cyclists approaching a roundabout in the left-hand lane may be turning right but may not have been able to get into the correct lane because of heavy traffic. They may also feel they are safer by keeping to the left all the way around the roundabout. Be aware of them and give them plenty of room. Next question. What should you do if you park on the road when it's foggy? A. Leave deep headlights and fog lights switched on. B. Leave deep headlights switched on. C. Leave main beam headlights switched on. D. Leave parking lights switched on. And the countdown begins now. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is leave parking lights switched on. Explanation. If you have to park your vehicle in foggy conditions, try to find a place to park off the road. If this isn't possible, park on the road facing in the same direction as the traffic. Leave your parking lights switched on and make sure they are clean. What should you do about driving if you have been taking medicine that causes drowsiness? A. Ask someone to come with you. B. Avoid driving and check with your doctor. C. Drive on quiet roads. Or D. Only drive if your journey is necessary. Let's start with the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B. Avoid driving and check with your doctor. Explanation. You aren't fit to drive if you are taking medicine that makes you drowsy. Check with your doctor if you are unsure. You mustn't put other road users, your passengers or yourself at risk. Next question. What would you do if you see older people crossing the road ahead? A. Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time. B. Rev the engine to let them know that you are waiting. C. Tap the horn in case they are hard of hearing. D. Wave them across so they know that you've seen them. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time. Explanation. Be aware that older people might take a long time to cross the road. They might also be hard of hearing and not even hear you approaching. Don't hurry older people across the road by getting too close to them or revving your engine. Next question. What should you do when you are approaching traffic lights that have red and amber showing together? A. Pass the lights if the road is clear. B. Stop because the lights are changing to red. C. Take care because there is a fault with the lights. Or D. Wait for the green light. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Wait for the green light. Explanation. Be aware that other traffic might still be clearing the junction as you approach. A green light means you may go on, but only if the way is clear. Next question. How do smart motorways prevent traffic bunching? A. By using advisory speed limits. B. By using higher speed limits. C. By using minimum speed limits or D, by using variable speed limits. Let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, 
two, one. And the correct answer is D, by using variable speed limits. Explanation. When a smart motorway is operating, you must follow the mandatory signs on the gantries above each lane, including the hard shoulder. Variable speed limits help keep the, tra the traffic moving and also help to prevent bunching. Are you guys ready for the next question? Okay, here we go. What does this sign mean? Pay attention to the sign, red, red, we know the color red. A, adverse camber, B, airport, C, road noise, or D, side winds. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, side winds. Explanation. A warning sign with a picture of a windsock indicates that there may be strong side winds. This sign is often found on exposed roads. Next question. You are on a road that is only wide enough for one vehicle. What should you do if a car is moving towards you? A. Force the other driver to reverse. B. Pull into a passing place if your vehicle is wider. C. Pull into a passing place on your left. Or D. Pull into a passing place on your right. Five, four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is C. Pull into a passing place on your left. Explanation. Pull into the nearest passing place on the left if you meet another vehicle on a narrow road. If the nearest passing place is on the right, just wait opposite this place. Next question. When will a new car need its first MOT test? A. When the car is five years old. B. When the car is one year old. C. When the car is seven years old. Or D. When the car is three years old. Let's begin the countdown. Five. Four, three, two, one. The correct answer is D, when the car is three years old. Explanation. The vehicle you drive must be roadworthy and in good condition. If it's over three years old, it must pass an MOT test to remain in use on the road unless it's exempt from the MOT test. For this, you can see the website gov.uk. Next question. What makes your tires illegal? A. If they have any large, deep cuts in the side wall. B. If they have different thread patterns. C. If they were bought second hand. D. If they are of different makes. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A. If they have any large deep cuts in the side wall. Explanation. Your tires may be of different threads and makes. They can even be second hand as long as they are in good condition. They must, however, be intact without cuts or tears. When checking the side walls for cuts and bulges, don't forget to check the side of the tire that's hidden from view under the car. Next question. What restrictions apply to people who have a provisional driving license? A. They can't drive at night. B. They can't drive over 30 miles per hour. C. They can't drive unaccompanied. 
D. They can't drive with more than one passenger. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. They can't drive unaccompanied. Explanation. You won't be able to drive unaccompanied until you have passed your practical driving test. If you haven't driven on the motorway while you are learning, ask your instructor to take you for a lesson on the motorway when you've passed your test. Alternatively, you could take part in the Pass Plus scheme. This has been created for new drivers and includes motorway driving. Ask your instructor for details. Next question. What does fuel efficient driving achieve? A. Damage to the environment. B. Improved road safety. C. Increased exhaust emissions. D. Increased fuel consumption. Let's start the countdown. Five. Four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B. Improved road safety. Explanation. The emphasis is on hazard awareness and planning ahead. By looking well ahead, you will have plenty of time to deal with hazards safely and won't need to brake sharply. This will also reduce damage to the environment. Next question. Oh, it looks so cool. What color are the reflective studs between the lanes on a motorway? A. Amber B. Green C. Red or D. White 5 4 3 two one and the correct answer is d white explanation white studs are found between the lanes on motorways they reflect back the light from your headlights this is especially useful in bad weather when visibility is restricted next question you are in a one-way street and you want to turn right. Where should you position your vehicle when there are two lanes? A. In either lane depending on the traffic. B. In the left-hand lane. C. In the right-hand lane. Or D. Just left of the center line. 5 4 3 2 one ready for the answer the correct answer is c in the right hand lane explanation when you are in a one-way street and you want to turn right you should take up a position in the right hand lane this will allow other road users not wishing to turn to pass on the left indicate your intention and take up the correct position in good time. Next question. What must you do at this junction? A. Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. B. Stop beyond the line at a point where you can see clearly. C. Stop only if there is traffic on the main road. Or D. Stop only if you are turning right. Five, four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is A. Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Explanation The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you are moving. Next question. You are driving in heavy traffic on a wet road. 
which lights should you use if there is a lot of surface spray? A. Deep headlights B. Main beam headlights C. Rear fog lights if visibility is more than 100 meters or 328 feet or D. Side lights only 5 4 3 2 one and the correct answer is a deep headlights explanation you must make sure that other road users can see you but you don't want to dazzle them use your deep headlights during the day if visibility is poor if visibility falls below 100 meters or 328 feet you may use your rear fog lights but don't forget to turn them off when the visibility improves. Next question. Your vehicle has broken down on a motorway. In which direction should you walk to find the nearest emergency telephone? A. Facing oncoming traffic. B. In the direction of the nearest exit. C. In the direction shown on the marker posts or D with the traffic flow. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C, in the direction shown on the marker posts. Explanation. Along the hard shoulder, there are marker posts at 100 meter intervals. This will direct you to the nearest emergency telephone. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Right hand lane for buses only. B. Right hand lane for turning right. C. The right hand lane ahead is narrow. D. The right hand lane is closed. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is the right hand lane is closed. Explanation. Yellow and black temporary signs may, may be used to inform you about roadworks or lane restrictions. Look well ahead. If you have to change lanes, do so in good time. Next question. As you approach a pelican crossing, the lights change to green. What should you do if older people are still crossing? A. Flash your lights in case they haven't noticed you. B. Rev your engine to make them hurry. C. Wait patiently while they cross. Or D. Wave them to cross as quickly as they can. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. Wait patiently while they cross. Explanation. If the lights turn to green, wait for any pedestrians to clear the crossing. Allow them to finish crossing the road in their own time and don't try to hurry them by revving your engine. Are we ready for the next question? Let's go. You are waiting to turn right at the end of the road. What should you do if your view is obstructed by parked vehicles? A. Move quickly to where you can see so you only block traffic from one direction. B. Stop and then move forward slowly and carefully for a clear view. C. Turn your vehicle around immediately and find another junction to use. Or D, wait for a pedestrian to let you know when it's safe for you to emerge. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, stop and then move forward slowly and carefully to get a clear view explanation 
At junctions, your view is often restricted by buildings, trees, or parked cars. You need to be able to see in order to judge a safe gap. Edge forward slowly and keep looking all the time. Don't cause other road users to change speed or direction as you emerge. Next question. In which conditions will your overall stopping distance increase? A. At night B. In fog C. In strong winds or D. In the rain Let's start the countdown 5 4 3 2 1 And the correct answer is in the rain explanation extra care should be taken in wet weather on wet roads your stopping distance could be double that in dry conditions ready for the next question let's go you see a horse rider as you approach a roundabout what should you do if they are signaling right but keeping well to the left? A. Cut in front of them B. Keep close to them C. Proceed as normal D. Stay well back And the countdown begins now 5 4 3 2 1 and the correct answer is D. Stay well back. Explanation. Allow, allow the horse rider to enter and exit the roundabout in their own time. They may feel safer keeping to the left all the way around the roundabout. Don't get up close behind or alongside them because that would probably upset the horse and create a dangerous situation. Next question. You are traveling in the left-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. How should you react to traffic joining from a slip road? A. Adjust your speed or change lane if you can do so safely. B. Increase your speed to ensure they join behind you. C. Maintain a steady speed. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A. Adjust your speed or change lane if you can do so safely. Explanation. Plan well ahead when approaching a slip road. If you see traffic joining the motorway, be prepared to adjust your speed or move to another lane if it's safe to do so. This can help the flow of traffic joining the motorway, especially at peak times. Next question. When should you use your vehicle's horn? A. To alert others to your presence. B. To allow your right of way. C. To greet other road users. D. To signal your annoyance. Let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, to alert others to your presence. Explanation. You mustn't use your vehicle's horn between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in a built-up area or when you are stationary, unless a moving vehicle poses a danger. Its function is to alert other road users to your presence. Next question. What does this sign mean? Again, remember the red color. A. Ancient monument ahead. B. Low bridge ahead. C. Traffic danger spot ahead. D. Tunnel ahead. And the countdown begins now. 5, 4, 
three, two, one. The correct answer is the tunnel ahead. Explanation. When approaching a tunnel, switch on your deep headlights. Be aware that your eyes might need to adjust to the sudden darkness. You may need to reduce your speed. Next question. What will happen if you follow this vehicle too closely? A. Your brakes will overheat. B. Your engine will overheat. C. Your fuel consumption will be increased. D. Your view ahead will be reduced. And let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Your view ahead will be reduced. Explanation. Staying back will increase your view of the road ahead. This will help you to see any hazards that might occur and give you more time to react. Are we ready for the next question? What information would be shown in a triangular road sign? Let's remember here the red color, red, A, ahead only, B, keep left, C. Minimum speed or D. Road narrows. Count down. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Road narrows. Explanation. Warning signs are there to make you aware of potential hazards on the road ahead. Take note of the signs so you are prepared and can take whatever action is necessary. Let's go for the next question, everyone. When must you contact the driver and vehicle licensing agency or the DVLA? A. When you change your vehicle. B. When you got a parking ticket. C. When you use your vehicle for work. Or D. When your vehicle's insurance is due. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. When you change your vehicle. Explanation. DVLA needs to keep its records up to date. It sends out a reminder when a vehicle's tax is due for renewal. To do this, it needs to know the name and the address of the registered keeper. Every vehicle in the country is registered, so it's possible to trace its history. Next question. You are driving along this road. What should you do if the red car cuts in close in front of you? A. Accelerate to get closer to the red car. B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. C. Flash your headlights several times. D. Give a long blast on the horn. Let's begin the countdown. 5, 4, Three, two, one, and the correct answer is B, drop back to leave the correct separation distance. Explanation. There are times when other drivers make incorrect or ill-judged decisions. Be tolerant and try not to retaliate or react aggressively. Always consider the safety of other road users, your passengers, and yourself. Next question. What should you be prepared to do in this situation? Please pay attention to the photo. A. Report the driver to the police. B. Slow down and give way. C. Sound your horn and continue. D. Squeeze through the gap. 
And the countdown begins now. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is B. Slow down and give way. Explanation. Sometimes large vehicles may need more space than other road users. If a vehicle needs more time and space to turn, be prepared to stop and wait. Next question. You are following a cyclist. What should you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead? A. Go around the cyclist on the junction. B. Hold back until the cyclist has passed the junction. C. Overtake the cyclist before you reach the junction. Or D. Pull alongside the cyclist and stay level until after the junction. 5. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is B. Hold back until the cyclist has passed the junction. Explanation. Make allowances for cyclists and give them plenty of room. Don't overtake and then immediately turn left. Be patient and turn behind them when they have passed the junction. Next question. What could you do to reduce the volume of traffic on the roads? A. Drive in a bus lane. B. Travel by car at all times. C. Use a car with a smaller engine. Or D. Walk or cycle on short journeys. 5, 4, 3, 2, one. The correct answer is D. Walk or cycle on short journeys. Explanation. Try not to use your car as a matter of routine. For shorter journeys, consider walking or cycling instead. This is much better for both you and the environment. Now, are you guys ready for the next and final question of today's test? Let's get on with it. Which shape is used for a giveaway signs? Shape A, shape B, shape C, or shape D? Let's start the countdown. Five. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is shape D. Explanation. Other warning signs are the same shape and color, but the giveaway triangle points downwards. When you see this sign, you must give way to traffic on the road that you are about to enter. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.